said, as we bow our heads for prayer. Our Lord and our God, we thank you for a time like this in which we have the privilege to worship you. It's our prayer, O oh God, that you will uh, accept our worship this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And it is time now, O oh Lord, to look into your words. We pray, O oh God, that the words of my mouth and the meditations that will be going on in the hearts of your people as we listen shall be acceptable before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. At the end of this all, your all glory and honor and adoration shall be yours and blessings shall be ours. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. Amen. Because we are saved in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to encourage the camera. I want to remind us that last week we talked about how humility can grant us access to this power and uh, we cited the example of the humility of our Lord Jesus Christ how he humbled himself and the Lord God gave him a name that is above all other names we're going to continue with that today we cited the humility of, of, uh, of Moses as well who will not abuse the power of God in seeking revenge but rather forgive and then uh, God calling him the meekest man in the world. We also have, we also talked about submission, submission to godly authority. We uh, extract the situation between uh, uh, Sarah, Abraham and Agar, and we also look at the centurion who came to the Lord Jesus Christ on behalf of his uh, servant. We looked at how they submitted to the uh, authority above them and they were able to influence uh, God to move on their behalf and we also talked about righteousness the place of righteousness in wielding the authority of God and as well as the baptism of the Holy Spirit we made mention of the fact that we cannot receive power without the baptism of the Holy Spirit that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is very very important it's very very essential that we are all baptized in the Holy Spirit to have access to the power of God. So today, we're taking it a notch higher by looking at the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus and the Word of God as major sources of believers' authority. The name of Jesus is the greatest name anywhere in the entire universe. No name is above that name. And the authority that name wields, no name carries it. And you want to begin to ask in your heart, why should it be so? Why is that so? So we're going to answer these questions as we go on in our message today by the grace of God. Because the name of a man is very important and it reflects the authority he carries. For instance, if the president of this nation or the prime minister of this nation now says, I am sending you to, the, uh, to anybody in the country, tell them, I, Justin Trudeau, I send you, I sent you to deliver the so and so message and to get so and so from you and bring it back to me. Once the person knows that I represent that authority and I mentioned that name, they want to comply because they know that name has authority backing, his, backing it up. The same thing is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ has authority backing it up strongly. And where did this authority come from? One, Jesus is God in man. He is both God and both man. This is a very complex statement, but I'll try to do justice to it within the ambit of, uh, of, of time. That I, that I have. Jesus Christ is God because he had been in existence in God and with God right from the beginning. John chapter 1 verse 1 says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. 
And if we go to verse 14 of John chapter 1, the Bible says, the Bible says, and the word became flesh. And we know that it was Jesus that became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we, as, we saw his glory as the glory of the only begotten Son of God. So, people of God, Jesus Christ is God. And let's take it a little further by saying, by referring us to Luke chapter 1, verse 35, as we look at how he was conceived. The, the Bible says in Luke chapter 1, verse 35, The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So, the only one to be born will be called the Son of God. That was how the Lord Jesus Christ was conceived in the womb of the Virgin Mary. He took the form of man through the Virgin Mary, but his deity is as a result of the Holy Spirit infusing the presence of God into the seed of a woman. He was not born by the union of a man and a woman, but he was born by the union of the Spirit and a woman, a virgin. So, through that, we had God inhabiting in his full nature a human body. So, that is why Jesus Christ is God and is man at the same time. And the Bible also makes us to understand in John chapter 3, verse 34, that for he whom God had sent speaketh the word of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Lord Jesus Christ does not carry the Spirit of God with a measure. He carried the fullness of the Spirit of God. And so that made him God, dwelling in a physical body as man. So that is why we feel comfortable to say that Jesus Christ is God, fully God, and man. He has the flesh of man and he has the spirit, the personality of God dwelling in that flesh and so wherever the word of God is wherever we see the presence of God there is always power that's what Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4 I think says it says where the word of the king is there is power who can say unto you what doest thou wherever the word of God is there is always power so anywhere we mention the name of Jesus Christ the presence of God is always there. He is backed by the unction of heaven, by the power that controls the entire creation. So, Jesus Christ is God, a man. And through his name, we have authority to exercise dominion in this world. Anywhere, any situation, any circumstance, we mention his name on. With faith, most of a necessity yield to us. But the missing link there is faith. And I want to sound a note of caution here that many of us have the tendency of taking the name of God in vain, the name of Jesus Christ in vain. Sometimes before a small thing happens, hey, Jesus Christ, how could you do that? We take the name of God for granted. We just use it, uh, uh, how do I describe that? We, ju we just use it like it's a toilet paper. A very common thing. It should not be. The name of Jesus Christ is a sacred name. And that is why if you, if, you, if you trivialize the name of Jesus Christ, when you need him, when you call upon him, it makes no difference. Because you do not know the weight of that name and you have been taking it for granted. May the Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So the name of Jesus Christ carries power because Jesus is God in man. And he carries the authority of God. And wherever God appears, things must fall in their proper places. The second reason why the name of Jesus Christ carries power is because of the victory he had over sin, over death, and over Satan. And because it is by through his crucifixion, his suffering, his crucifixion, his death and resurrection, that he delivered us from the shackles of death from the shackles of sin and from eternal damnation in hell. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 22, and I want to read for us, it says, Who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God 
angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. That refers to our Lord Jesus Christ. When the Lord Jesus Christ died, he rose again from the dead and went straight after revealing himself to his disciples and people around them, he went straight into heaven. He is now seated above all powers in heaven and on earth, in hell, over powers and principalities, over everything that exists. And by, as a result of that, since he is the head of everything, he has authority over everything. So at the mention of his name by his children or by his followers, things must respond. Because he has power over everything. And if we look at Ephesians chapter 4, verses 8 to 10 also, the Bible says, this is why it, uh, this is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does the ascend, what does he ascended mean, except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is very the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. That is NIV translation. So this passage is telling us that the Lord Jesus Christ went into hell. He descended down into hell to take captivity captive, to snatch power and authority from the devil. When he took it, he rose again and gave that authority back to us. He backed us with that authority. So at the mention of his name, the devil must tremble. The devil must yield. They must flee. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so, people of God, anytime the devil challenges us, condemning us before God, saying that, yes, he knows our past. He is aware of what we have done in the secret, those sins we have committed. Let us also remind him of his past, his present, and his future. What is his past? His past is that the Lord Jesus Christ dealt with him before he rose again. His present situation is that he is chained in the chain of darkness, according to Jude 6, until the day of judgment. And his future is that he is going to rot in hell eternally. And as a result of that, in, that, in the name of that Jesus that bruised his head, that crushed him and put him in chain, he must bow to whatever command the children of God gives to him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So people of God, it is important for us to hold the name of the Lord Jesus Christ with all seriousness. We should not cross with it. We should not trivialize it. We should not joke with it. And when we see people joking with it, we should, you know, separate and, you know, keep ourselves away from such. Otherwise, we will be losing the power in that name. May the Lord let the name continuously be efficacious to us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The third thing that made the name of Jesus Christ to be powerful and potent is because of his position and posture. His position and posture in heaven. And what do I mean? The Bible shows us in many places that our Lord Jesus Christ left this earth and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. In many places, the Bible says he is seated, he is seated. And I want to encourage us, I'll just give us one of such passages, Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. Um, uh, Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. That the Lord Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of God, of power in heaven. So I want to give us that understanding that we should take time also to look for other passages where the Bible says the Lord Jesus Christ is seated. There are about four or five places like that. I deliberately will not give us because I want to encourage us to engage ourselves in these studies so that we learn more and the Lord will be able, will be able to speak to us directly and personally. So the Bible in Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 makes us to understand that Christ Jesus has ascended into heaven and is seated at the hand of, hand of power. The same thing in Matthew chapter 26 verse 64. The same thing is also written there. We have a similar thing written there. 2664. Uh, let me read that one to us. It says... Jesus said unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. So that was Jesus Christ saying it himself that Pilate 
will see the Son of Man sitting in heaven at the right hand of power. So, there we see that the Lord Jesus Christ sat. In another place, the only place, however, where Jesus Christ was described as standing is Acts chapter 7, verse 56. And I'm trying to make a point here, and I please want you to please carefully follow me. Uh, Acts 7, 56, it says, And said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. What is this passage referring to? This was when Stephen was being stoned to death for declaring that the Lord Jesus Christ is Lord. They were stoning him to death, and he raised eye up his eyes, and he saw heaven open. And he saw the Lord Jesus Christ standing at the right hand of power. Don't forget, the earlier scriptures were telling us that Jesus was sitting. But at this juncture, Jesus had to stand up. And what we are looking at is that the name of Jesus Christ is powerful because of his position and his posture. Now, in these two passages, he assumed two positions. The first position is that he was sit, uh, the, sorry, two postures, but one position. The right hand is the position. But two postures, he was sitting at a time and he was standing at a time. Now, his position in heaven is the right hand of power. That means he commands power both in heaven and on earth. He is standing where the power subsides, where, this power, where the power resides. He has direct, unhindered, unlimited, unmeasured access to power. So anywhere his name is mentioned, that power is automatically invoked and it comes into action. And that is on the right hand of power by a virtue of his position. He has access to power and every mention of his name evokes power. However, the Bible also says he sits. That is his position. He sits in heaven at the right hand of power as a matter of reigning. He is reigning as king. He is reigning as lord. And where a king is, that is where the power resides. Where the head of state resides is the seat of power. So the Lord Jesus Christ is sitting as a reigning Messiah, as the king of kings, as the lord of lords. And so his name must of a necessity exude power. So later, we now see that the Bible says he stands at the right hand of power. The question now is, what made him stand up? If we look carefully at that passage, one of his servants, his faithful servant, was in danger, was about to be killed. The Lord Jesus Christ rose in his majesty and was waiting. My son, in this situation, what choice are you making? What do you want me to do? What do you want to do with my name? What do you want to do with my authority? But if you listen to what, if you read further, you will discover that Stephen said, I see heavens open and I see the Son of Man standing at the right hand of power. And he said, Lord Jesus, take my spirit. And then he died. The Lord Jesus at that point saw that this guy was in trouble. And this guy knows him. And he rose to attend to his matter. And from there, Stephen made a choice. If Stephen had said, Lord, let fire come in the name of Jesus Christ and consume all these ones, believe you me, that is what would have happened. But at that time, Stephen had seen heaven. He knew what was going on on the earth. And he said, wow, how can I treat that glory that I'm seeing to this decay that I'm seeing here? I would rather go there than stay in this decay. And that was why the Lord granted his wish and took him home. Otherwise, Stephen would have lived beyond that situation. So, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ exudes power. He is always ready to attend to the need of his children whenever they are in trouble and whenever they call upon him. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be It's my prayer that we will have a better understanding of what the Lord Jesus Christ will do on our behalf if we will call upon his name in our times of troubles. 
The next thing that made the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to be so powerful is, is, is our, to, for us is because of our position. Our position in Christ. Our position in Christ enables us to use that name to the point that the name will produce results for us. What is our position in Christ? Second, I mean Ephesians chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 5 and 6, it says, Even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ, grace ye are saved. And number 6 says, And had raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that scripture is telling us that when Christ delivered us, he didn't just deliver us, but in the spirit, he makes us to sit with himself in the position of authority and of power in heaven. And if you look carefully at that word, he didn't say we are sitting with. He said we are sitting right in. Now, I would like to quickly make the, show the decision between the two statements I've just made. To sit with means maybe somebody sitting by his right hand, another by his left hand. And probably, let's say, Peter on his right, uh, James on his left, Andrews, John, and on and on, and on, the first twelve, and then the other uh, disciples that follow them, and on and on unto, unto Paul, and on and on and on and on and on, until throughout the ages, unto our own generation. That means we will be sitting very far from him. But the Bible says, we are not seated with, but we are seated in. And that implies that we, this, Jesus Christ is right here. We are right there on the same spot in him. Every other person that comes into Christ is right there on the same spot where Jesus is. And where is he? He's on the right side of power. And so that's why if we call the name of Jesus, we're invoking the power that is enveloping us. We're sending out power to go and cause things to happen on our behalf. People of God, time will not permit us to really, really break this thing down very, very well. But I pray that the Holy Spirit of the living God will give us revelations of this power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name. Amen. But may I let us know that it is not possible for us to be in Christ or for us to wield his authority or to use his name if we have not submitted our lives to him. It is not possible. The first step we have to do is to submit our lives to him and make sure that we are in Christ. It is our presence in Christ that grants us access to use the name. If you are not close, if you are not one of the close aides of the minister, for instance, you cannot go about using his name to get things done. If you are caught, that's a criminal act. If you are caught, you are going to be prosecuted and probably sent to jail. Certainly sent to jail because it's impersonation. So, the same thing, if you are not a child of God, registered and living in his kingdom, you do not have the right to use his name. If you use it, you're just using it in vain, it would amount to nothing. So the very first thing is that you must ensure that you are properly positioned in Christ. You are rooted in him. You have given your life to him and you are born again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, the other thing, and I hope we'll be able to round it up here today, and then next week we'll be able to go properly into now using the power that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because each time I try to sit down to reflect and to meditate on these things, the Lord just kept opening my eyes to see wider and wider. And that's why it has taken us like three Sundays to talk about access through the word. And I'm hoping if the Lord will permit again, we will look into how to wield, how to use that authority as we ought to use it. So lastly today, the other thing we want to look at is the power of the the power through the word. Access to the power of God through the word. And I want to make quickly say that the word of God is the spiritual law that governs everything. The spiritual law that governs everything is the word of God. And the Bible in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says that word the word of God is quick. The word quick means is alive. The word of God 
is living, it has spirit in it, it can cause something to happen. It can cause something to, to, to stop happening. So the word of God is alive. And it is powerful. It has power. And very, very sharp. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. It is powerful in the physical. It also it is also powerful in the spiritual. In the physical, in the seen, and in the unseen. It can cause a separation between the unseen soul and the unseen spirit. And the it says, dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of this joint and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and intent of the earth. So by the power of the word of God, everything is extrayed and judged and determined. So the power of God is the law. And as his children, these laws are authority for us to use in every situation and circumstances of life but the unfortunate thing is that people perish the bible says due to lack of knowledge according to Hosea chapter 6 uh, chapter 4 verse 6 the bible says my people my people perish for a lack of knowledge and knowledge of what knowledge of the world many of us are biblical illiterates i always say many of us don't know the power the the the, the power in the word of god we don't even know the word in the first instance let alone the power in the world it is by the word that the world was created and if we don't have an encounter with the word what i mean by encounter is if we don't come in contact with the person of the world because the word is a person if we don't come in contact with the person of the world we may not be able to wield the authority that is inherent in it that is, if we don't have the revelation of who the word is, we may not be able to use the word correctly. We may know the letter, but the Bible says the letter killeth, but the Spirit gives inspiration. So, people of God, understanding of the word is very essential. And that's why God, uh, God told Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, that this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate in day and night, so that you may be careful to observe and to do what is written in it. It is then that you will make your ways prosperous and you will have good success. And this man Joshua was a, was a very busy man. And God told him, look, don't be too busy for the world. Create time. Sit down with it. Study it. If you look at what he had to do at that time, he had to lead people to war. He had to divide the land for them. He had to adjudicate over their cases. He is also a father. He has his own personal uh, domestic affairs to attend to. He attends to issues of national interest and his own personal interest. So he was a very busy man. But God told him, you cannot succeed except you give attention to the world. Because that is where you will derive success, power to succeed. And so you have to pay attention to read and do it and follow uh, the word. The same thing with us. We must follow the word of God if we want to exercise authority and power. Because the word of the Lord Jesus Christ, the word of God in general, carries power. Remember what uh, the Lord told uh, Peter in Luke chapter 5. When Peter was failing, he couldn't catch any fish. Jesus said, push back the boat into the sea and cast your net on the right side and you will cast the multitudes of fruit. But Peter said, look, we've labored all night. There is nothing. We have not been able to catch anything. But maybe something struck in his hand and said, ah, this man is not an ordinary person. That was an encounter. He knew that that man who said it was not an ordinary person. It was, a, was somebody who carried power. So he said, okay, because you said so, at your word. That's in Luke chapter 5. He said, ah, I will let down the net. And when he let down the net, we saw the result. So, the same thing happened to him, or let me say, similar thing happened to him again when he saw Jesus Christ walking on water. He said, ah, hey, this, is, this must be a spirit. It cannot be a human. It cannot be somebody we know. They became frightened, but the Lord Jesus Christ said, it is me. Peter said, if it is you, Lord, then bid me to come. Ask me to come and walk on water. And Jesus said, okay, come. And Peter stepped out in faith. And physically, people will say, yes, he walked mm. on water. But spiritually, he walked on the word. If the word did not proceed that come, and he steps out like that, he will surely sink. He will surely sink. So, and for as long as he kept his mind on the word, his gaze on the Lord Jesus Christ, 
Christ, he continued to experience that miracle. And the moment he shifted his attention from it, things changed and he began to sink. May we not sink in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So summarily, the power in the word of God is, is enormous. It cannot be quantified. And let me quickly refer also to the beginning in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. The Bible says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the house was without form and was void. And the Spirit of God was hovering above the water. Can you see the situation there? The situation was chaotic. There was darkness. And the Spirit of God was there, just hovering over the water, brooding over the water. Waiting, waiting. Nothing could proceed. Nothing could happen until the word was spoken. God had to speak the word for the work of creation to continue. And when God said, let there be light, then the creation continued from that point. There was light. And then other things were systematically created. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So other things were automatically created. That is how it works. If we learn how to invoke the power of the word with understanding, with revelation, we will be able to cause things to happen. We can use the word of God to cause things to be created. The Bible says, God called that which is not as if though they were. So we as his children too can cause situations to be. We can cause situations to change by the power of the word of God. But like I said, nobody can use this power except that person has had an encounter with the personality of the word. Praise the Lord. Amen. May the Lord grant us better understanding of his ways in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us bow our heads for prayers. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your word that you have sent to us today. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all adoration, because you alone are worthy to be praised. Father, accept our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Lord and our God, we have heard your word that the name of Jesus Christ opens every door. May we not take this name in vain in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May we use the name to glorify God in heaven and for the benefit of humanity in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's our prayer, O oh God, that we continue to open our eyes of understanding, to see into your word and to comprehend what you want us to do. And that your name might be glorified and our lives may be made better and better in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let us rise. Let us rise on our feet as we go into a session of intercessory prayers. Let us begin to appreciate the Lord for his goodness, for his mercies upon our lives. Let us say thank you, Father, for what you are doing. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you will do. Let us open our mouths and appreciate God. Let us open Father, our mouths and appreciate we God. You. We appreciate you, Lord. Let us open our mouths and appreciate Father, God. We love you. For God is worthy to be praised. Father, be exalted in the name God is worthy to be glorified. Be glorified. Lord. God is be worthy to be exalted. In the name of Jesus. He's worthy to be magnified. Lord, we say, Father, you are worthy to be Let us magnify him. In the name of Jesus. Let us Jesus. glorify him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. For everything you are God for his protective hands upon us. Let us appreciate him for his goodness and his mercy that endures.
we have prayed. Amen. According to the words that we just listened to. There are times when probably out of ignorance or out of mistake, we have taken the name of the Lord lightly. Let us tell God, Father, have mercy on me. Wherever I have used the name on please have mercy on me. Forgive me, prayer in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Lord, Jesus, pray I pray, oh God, that wherever I have used the name of Wadley, please have mercy upon me in the name of Jesus Christ. Have mercy upon me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, have mercy upon me wherever I use the word wrongly. In the name of Jesus. Have mercy. Wherever I have called your name in vain, wherever I have used your name in vain, please, Lord, have mercy upon me. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Grant me, O God, a new and contrite heart that I will never repeat such again in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, help me to be able to use your word rightly. In, in Jesus, Jesus mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And generally, this morning, we're going to use the life and story of uh, Lazarus, according to John chapter 11, for prayers. I will be skipping some verses so that we'll be able to cover and uh, save some time. Uh, we look, we're looking at John chapter 11, verse 39. The Bible says, Jesus said, Take ye uh, away, uh, sorry, uh, John chapter 11. Verse 23, Jesus said unto, unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Uh, Jesus was telling this woman that her brother will rise today, 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 not tomorrow, not in the future, but he will first of all rise today. But the woman does not understand it. She was thinking, it is going to happen in the future. Let us tell God, whatever is pushing my blessing of today into the future, whatever is pushing the blessing that I'm supposed to enjoy today further back into the future, Father, decapitate them. Take away power from them. And let me enjoy your blessings today, Lord, today, as you have ordained prayer in the, name of Jesus. in the name of Jesus. Father, Christ. in the mighty name of Lord, Jesus, we pray. it is your will. And it's your wish your to bless me today. today. Whatever today, is now pushing today, the appointed time to a later date, Father, deal with them, O oh God, for me today, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, it is your plan to daily load us with benefit. So whatever will make us miss our benefit of today, Father, push them away from us. Take them away from us, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Jesus in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Verse 31 says, The Jews which the Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her when they saw Mary, that she, she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying she goeth unto the grave to weep. Let us tell God, Father, people shall not gather to weep with me. People shall not Jesus. gather to mourn with me. Prayer shall in the name not of gather Jesus. To with me. Father, people we shall not gather to mourn with me. People shall not gather in the name of Jesus us. Christ. People shall not gather to weep with us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shall of joy alone shall be our portion. To we shall not us. weep. In the name of we shall Jesus. not mourn. We in shall the mighty name of we Jesus. We shall not mourn. It shall be celebration in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. It shall be celebration galore. In, the in our home, in our church, every in the name of Jesus Christ. Every of our gathering every of shall, our be, gathering a shall be a gathering of glory for glory, for celebration, for joy. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' you, mighty Jesus. name, we have prayed. Amen. The Bible in verse 39 says, Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead for days. We're going to take a number of prayers from there. From the first part, he says, Jesus said, Take away the stone. Let us tell God, Father, send your word and take away every obstacle from my path in the name of Jesus Christ. 
prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, send your word and remove every stone or every form of obstacles in my way. In the mighty name of Jesus, everything that the devil is using to seal me and to pin me down, Father, remove them from my path. Remove them from my ways today. In the name of Jesus, grant me the grace of God to escape today, Lord, from every chains of the devil, from every shackles of the enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, command and send your word to deliver me send in the name of Jesus Christ. Send your word to deliver me, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. It also says, Martha, the sister of the of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time is thinking. Let us tell God, Father, wherever my life has been written off. Wherever I have been condemned, my life has been Father, written. give me Wherever another hope. Condemned, renew my hope. Condemned. Renew my renew strength. My hope in renew my your strength grace upon me, O God. Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Revive my glory in me, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever I have been condemned, wherever I have been written off, Lord, renew my hope. Rekindle your grace upon me, O God. Refresh your glory in me, O God. Lord, Renew my glory, O God, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Create me a new oh, In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We are also going to pray to God that, Father, wherever my life is stinking, wherever I am stinking spiritually, Father, please deliver me. Lord, wash me. Make Lord, me clean. Make, make me whole. Me make Let me whole. give the aroma the of your glory. Let me give the Instead of aroma of, of death. In, in the, the name, name of Jesus Christ. Christ. Father, Father let of aroma death. of glory come let out of me, O God. Instead of glory. aroma of death. In the name of Jesus. Wherever my come life is of dirty, of wherever my life is stinking, Lord, cause a change. <coughs> Wash me, O God. Wash me, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Make me clean. Make me whole. Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. <coughs> In Jesus' mighty name, we are praised. Amen. We still tell God, Father, whatever is in my life that is not bringing out glory, whatever is in my life that is not bringing out honor, Father, take away from my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, remove far from me. In the, in the name, name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. And let my life bring forth glory. Let my life, let my life bring forth honor. Let my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ. Let my in life be celebrated. Jesus. Let my, in my the name of Jesus Christ. Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let my life be celebrated, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In My Jesus' God, mighty God. name, we have prayed. Amen. And uh, verse 43 says, And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Let us tell God, Father, call me forth. Lord, call forth call my glory. Call forth from my this glory. moment onward, let my glory shine. Jesus, Lord, from this Lord moment call, call, let my glory call me forth, O oh God. Let me, me hear your Jesus. voice, O oh God. Let me hear your voice, Lord. Let me hear in your voice, O oh God. Speak your word of power into my life. That my glory may come forth. That my glory may show forth. That your power may show forth in me. That your presence may be made manifest in me. In my ministry, in my family, in everything that concerns me. In the name of Jesus Christ. In my church, in the name of Lord, Jesus. Lord, call me forth, O God. From the position of death to life. Call me forth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Of death to life. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be glorified. In the name of Jesus. Create me a new Lord, send forth your word, O God, and deliver me. Send forth your word and heal me in the name of Jesus Christ. Send forth your word, O God, and bring me out into glory, to the glory of your name, into your glory, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the glory that is inherent in me come forth. Let it show forth. Let the glory that is inherent in my ministry show forth. Let the glory that is inherent in this ministry show forth. Let the glory that is inherent in my children, my wife, and everybody around me show forth in the name of Jesus Christ. Thy salvation and renew our spirit within me. 
In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Verse 44 says, And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Lose him and let him go. Let us tell God. Because if you look at this situation, it was bound face, hands and legs. Everything all bound together. And it was kept in a hole in the ground. But when he heard the name of Jesus Christ, a power took him from there without any help. Let's tell God, Father, send your help. Lord, send, send your, your power. Send and your, deliver send me. Your power. In the name of Jesus, and send your help. In the name of send Jesus. your power. Lord, and cause send your me help. to send comfort to the glory of your cause name. Me to comfort in the, the glory of, of Jesus Christ. Christ. Call in the me name of Jesus, to comfort. Lord, call me in the to name comfort. of Jesus, send the your name power. Of Jesus, send the power that power. brought Lazarus in out the of the dead. Jesus. Let that power, power come into me and give the me a power. new life in the name of Jesus and renew my strength in the name of Jesus. There was no helper for Lazarus in the grave, but the word of God located him and brought him forth. Father, oh God, let your word locate me, and bring me forth, for expansion. and to show forth your glory, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your Jesus glory Christ. be shown in my life, in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' in mighty name we have prayed. Amen. The Bible also says, Jesus said unto them, lose him and let him go. Let tell God, Father, speak this same word into my heart, life. No. Lose me. Lose from me. every shackle, me from, from every, every bondage, Lose and let from me go every for your glory. In the name of Jesus. Christ. And let me. Father, send forth this word. Let me go in the name of Jesus. For your glory. That I may go in the name of Jesus. and show forth your glory. Let me go and in show forth your glory. Jesus Christ. In the name send of forth Jesus. your word, O oh God. My and God, deliver God, him. God, in, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. People of God, Lord, we need to use the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for our deliverance. The Bible Lord, says, even the lawful captive shall be delivered. In the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus is the power that can deliver the lawful captives. Lord, because he has paid the penalty the of, of the law. So let's Lord, pray. Let's tell God in that in the name of the name Jesus, of Jesus Lose me, lose me, Lord. and let me go. And let me in go. the name of Jesus, every from power the holding me back, of the devil, everything in the name of Jesus, from every power I break holding me back, today, in the name of by Jesus, by the power of the word of God, by the power in the name of Jesus, Lord, I, I am free. Jesus, I am liberated. I am delivered. In the mighty name of Jesus, I am liberated. I am delivered. Jesus, in the mighty let your name be glorified in my life, in my home, in my church, Lord, over everybody that surrounds me, glorify your name in their lives, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, let me see joy around me, peace around me. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We're going to pray for our nation. I will tell God, Father, bring a stop to the ongoing scourge. If it is our sin, Father, please have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us and forgive us and cleanse us. Heal our land. Prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, we pray, O oh God, Jesus. that you will have mercy upon us. Jesus. If it have is, this, if it is our sin Jesus, if it that is, is bringing sin, this scourge upon the nations this, of the world, of, of, please have mercy, O oh God. Father, have mercy, O oh God. The word says, if my people who are called by my name, name will humble Christ. themselves, Lord, confess their sins, Jesus. you will hear from heaven and come from the from their wickedness. In the name of Jesus. You will hear from heaven. You will look down, you will answer them, and you will heal their land. Father, we stand in the gap this morning with all of our of children Jesus. of God all over Lord, the world. We and we pray, O oh God, we that you will have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon we will forgive us. our sins, O oh God, sins. and you will cleanse us, O oh God, and you will heal our land. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Father, heal our land, O God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, heal our land, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let there be healing, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let our nation be healed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let our nation be healed, Lord. From coronavirus, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let our nation be healed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. People of God, the Bible, according to our word, or the word of God, it says, especially I want to take verse 6, it says, No, uh, that is Psalm 91, verse 6, it says, No, for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, no, for the destruction that wasted at noonday. Up to verse 7 now. 
It says, A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Let us tell God, Father, no evil, no pestilence, no disease, whatever by whatever name it is called, will come near me. In the name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, no pestilence, no disease shall come near me, nor come near my dwelling place. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, no disease shall come near me. In the name of Jesus Christ. No pestilence shall come near me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, protect me. Protect me. Protect me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, protect me. Protect my home. Protect, protect your my, church. Protect, protect your everything church. that concerns me, Lord. That, that no pestilence shall come near me. In the, name of in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come near us. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. People of God, we're going to declare as usual from Psalm 91. And so please, I want you to please say this after me. We that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, we that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most shall High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We shall say of the Lord. We shall say of the Lord. He is our refuge. He is our refuge. And our fortress. And our fortress. Our God. Our God. In Him we will we will we, we, we trust. In Him we will trust. Surely. Surely. He shall deliver us from the snare of the fowler. He shall deliver us from the snare of the fowler. And from the noisome pestilence. And from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover us with his feathers. He shall cover us with his feathers. And under his wing. And under his wing. Shall we trust. Shall we trust. His truth. His truth. Shall be our shield and buckler. Shall be our shield and buckler. We shall not be afraid for the terror by night. We shall not be afraid of the terror by night. Nor for the arrow that flyeth by day. Nor for the arrow that flyeth by day. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. Nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at our side. A thousand shall fall at our side. And ten thousand at our right hand. And ten thousand at our right side. But it shall not come. But it shall not come near us. Only with our eyes. Only with our eyes. Shall we behold and see the reward of the wicked? Shall we behold and see the reward of the wicked? Because we have made the Lord. Because we have made the Lord, which is our refuge, which is our refuge, even the most high, even the most high, our habitation, our habitation. There shall no evil befall us. There shall no evil befall us. Neither shall any plague come nigh our dwelling. Neither shall any plague come near our dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over us. For he shall give his angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. To keep us in all our ways. They shall bear us up in their hands. They shall bear us up in their hands. Lest we dash the, our foot against a stone. Lest we dash our foot against a stone. We shall tread upon the lion. We shall tread upon the lion. And other. And other. The young lion. The young lion. And the dragon. And the dragon. Shall we trample under feet? Shall we trample under feet? Because we have said our love upon him because we have said our love upon him therefore will he deliver us therefore will he deliver us he will set us on high he will set us on high because we have known his name because we have known his name we shall call upon him we shall call upon him and he will answer us and he will answer us he will be with us in trouble he will be with us in trouble he will deliver us he will deliver us and honor us and honor us with long life with long life will he satisfy us will he satisfy us and show us his salvation and show us salvation let's at this point give thanks to god lord let's we thank appreciate you. him because lord, of the promises that we have claimed lord, this morning we thank you. let us say thank you father because we know your words what is ye and amen because we know your word is true and it will surely come to pass let us appreciate him, let us glorify him, let us exalt him. In the name of Jesus. Are you Lord? Faithful are you Lord? Faithful. Lord our Father, faithful. Faithful are you Lord? Faithful.
prayed. Amen. Lastly, let us open our hearts as individuals unto God and ask for those things that we feel we need. Just tell God all our needs. Cast all your burdens upon Him, for He cares for you, says the word of the Lord. Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We bless you. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all adoration for all that you have been doing in our lives and for what you have promised to do. To you be all the glory, honor, and adoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, you have said we should call upon you and you will hear and answer us. This morning, we have called upon you concerning our lives concerning our families, concerning the world as a whole. Father, we pray you will mercifully answer our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray, O oh God, that you will grant our heart desires according to your wishes in glory, in riches in glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Offering time. Blessing time. God, we thank you for this time of fellowship that we have shared in your presence. And we thank you because we know your presence is in our midst. Father, I accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We bring this little offering in appreciation of your goodness and your mercies that endures forever. And it's our prayer that you will mercifully receive them from our hands and use them for your glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray, O oh God, for as many as we do not have who are lacking in one thing or the other. You will mercifully look upon them and grant their hard desires in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Please sit. Um, I want to thank every one of us for joining us in this service today. And if you don't know before, this is uh, we are representing the Anglican Church of the Good Shepherds, Brampton, Ontario, in Canada. And as you know, it's not possible for us to meet at our usual venue. And that's why we have decided to host this fellowship. And we, I believe we also know that what is called the church is not a physical building, but a gathering of the children of God. So today we have a church meeting together online. It's our prayer that the presence of God will be made manifest in our lives and in our homes and situations in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, we appreciate you very, very much for joining us. If you are living anywhere around Brampton, 
Mississauga or any of these axes, you are free to fellowship with us every Sunday. Our usual meeting venue is the Brampton Soccer Center, Sandalwood Parkway East. That is Sandalwood and Dixie. That's the major intercession. You can join us uh, as we fellowship together. Uh, by the grace of God, the Lord will bless you as you do so in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Commit your ways into the to the Lord. Trust in Him, and He will perfect all that concerns you. What are your plans for this new week? What do you intend to do? How do you intend to live your life? Commit everything into your hand, into the hands of God. What do you need that you want God to see to? Talk to God now. Commit everything into his hands. Lay them one by one before him. Because he has promised to be with us. He has promised to bless us. And his promise can never and shall never fail. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Our Father and our God, we thank you for a time like this in which we have the privilege to gather to worship in your presence. We thank you because your word says we are two or three are gathered together in your presence there. You shall be in their midst and you will grant their request. And we know for sure that distance is no barrier in the spirit. Before you, the whole world is one and you know and you see and you are everywhere. To you be all the glory, honor, and adoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for your word that you have sent to us. Thank you for the power that we have in the name of Jesus. Thank you, O oh God, for the grace we have to have access into your word. To you be all the glory and honor in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, we have gathered, we have worshipped in your presence. It's our prayer, O oh God, that our worship today be acceptable before you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And Lord, as we shall be dispersing everyone to our different ways, we pray, O oh God, that your presence will not live our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This new week, we commit into your hands. We pray, O oh God, that you will lead us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that you will go ahead of us and make our paths to be straight before the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And at the end of the week, when we shall look back, let us have reasons to say, Father, thank you for all that you have done for us. Thank you. We praise and worship your holy name, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name, O oh God. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. People of God, as you go into the world this week, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Amen. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Amen. Now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is When I Survey the Wondrous Cross.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Thank you and God bless you all. Amen.